It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. They are CBS News correspondents Larry LeSeur and Alexander Kendrick. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Ferenc Neutsch, former Prime Minister of Hungary. There's a new political saying, one born in our times, to the effect that there are two kinds of diplomats. Those who think they can negotiate with the communists and those who have tried. Our guest tonight is one who has tried. As the former Prime Minister of Hungary, he is now an exile in this country. Mr. Naj, do you think that coexistence is possible between the slave world and the free world? Do you think it's practical? I think uh, coexistence is possible between nations, between Russia and other nations on the Western side. But I do not believe coexistence is possible between ideologies. Communism is an imperialistic ideology which cannot give up the, uh, its final goal for the coexistence. Well, tell me, Mr. Nas, do you think it's possible to uh, break the grip of the communist dictatorship over Central Europe, we'll say, without the use of outside force? It is impossible. The uh, Iron Curtain people never will be able to liberate themselves. Uh, they will be liberated only by a new settlement of the world. Under a modern dictatorship, any kind of uh, open resistance or counter-revolution is impossible. Well, what do you think, uh, Mr. Naja, are the weaknesses of the communist system? Does it lie in their stretch out of the workers in the factories, or is it in their effort to collectivize the agricultural workers and farmers? Their methods, methods of violation and terror, shows their weakness best, because there is no country under communist uh, dictatorship or communist rule in which the leaders take the dare to share the responsibility with the people. Well, it, do the leaders, uh, you think, especially enjoy whatever fruits there may be of communism, or does anything trickle down to the people? I think uh, the, the real communists in the Iron Curtain countries, only the leaders and the beneficiaries of the communism. Followers of the communism are only in the free countries, not, not in the Iron Curtain countries, where the, where the people knows communism. In other words, you think there are more dissidents than against communism behind the Iron Curtain than there are outside? Certainly. I can say that the Western world has undivided people's sympathy only in the Iron Curtain countries. Mr. Naj, the Red Hungarian government, as you know, has protested against the fact that we are sending balloons, I believe it's the crusade for freedom, is sending balloons over uh, Hungary and dropping leaflets from them. Now, do you think that's an effective way of informing or arousing the, the people? The protest of the Hungarian government shows that the balloon action was very effective. Mr. Naj, I've been working uh, along the Iron Curtain for some years now, and uh, it struck me that this balloon action that they launched from Munich uh, during this past summer uh, was also a pretty effective way of doing things. But uh, would you explain now uh, what is the purpose of this uh, balloon propaganda campaign? It's certainly not to rouse up a revolt in, in Hungary, is it? Not. Uh, it uh, would be useless, even worse thing, wrong thing, to try to uh, rouse uh, the people, because, as I said, under a modern dictatorship, any kind of open resistance is impossible. But, because there is no leader of the free people 
who can say to the people what to do and what to demand. It is important to give encouragement and to express their wishes, their desires, from here. It's outside leadership, in other words, but it's being applied within the framework of legality in Hungary. Isn't yes, that sir. the idea? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I take it, Mr. Naj, uh, that uh, you've had some word, perhaps, from Hungary on how effective these leaflets may be? No, I was uh, recently in uh, India. I spent uh, uh, far, on Far East, about eight weeks, and just arrived before Christmas, so I do not have any direct information since then. Mr. Time. Nash, we did hear that while you were in India, you did have an opportunity to talk to the Prime Minister of uh, that great country, Prime Minister Nehru. Now, did you feel that there was any danger of uh, a communist coup d'etat in India, such as took place in your own country? I, I can tell you that there is no communist danger in India. There will be no communism at least in the next five years. There are many factors fighting communism much more than in some so-called friendly countries in, the, uh, in Asia. Well, do you feel that they treat that the communists externally as severely or as stringently as they treat the communists internally? They're fighting the communism inside in the country uh, very effectively. You have to see the misery and poorness of the Indian people to appreciate the fight against communism. But they are they are not, not, uh, they, they are not very, very friendly and satisfied with the world communism too. After Mr. Nehru came back from China, he delivered a very strong anti-communist speech in which he said openly, because the Chinese leaders succeeded to develop something in China, they are not competent to give advices to the Indian leaders what to do in India. Mr. Nehru said, we know that better than they. Then again, in his speech he said, the communists are not progressives, they are reactionaries. They are living in the past. They are trying to copy the 37 years uh, old uh, Russian Revolution today, and they are trying to act on the basis of a book was written 100 years ago. What was Mr. Nehru particularly interested in learning from you, uh, Mr. Naji? Did he ask you questions about how the communist uh, push took place in uh, Budapest? I, I, I started to bring up this question. I told Mr. Nehru, I understand their fight against colonialism, but why they do not include the Central and Eastern European countries when they are fighting for the liberation of the colonies under the most cruel Soviet colonialization. He said, there is some difference between the status of the uh, iron, so-called Iron Curtain countries and the old colonies, but whatever you call it, it is oppression and exploitation, and I never recognized these politics of the Soviet Union. Mr. Naj, what was your impression of the Indian attitude toward the United States? I was prepared to find a, an anti-American sentiment, and I didn't find. Uh, the, the young people through which you can find uh, really the attitude of the, of the nation the young people are not anti-Americans. They want to come to the United States either to study 
to continue their study here in the United States, or many educated young people are ready to come here as farm worker just to spend a year in the United States. They are admiring the uh, developments of, uh, of uh, the United States, and they are admiring the democracy. What was the uh, reason, actually, for your visit to uh, India, Mr. Naj? I was invited by the Indian Peasant Party to study the rural uh, reconstruction work in India, and then uh, to deliver speeches to the... Well, because uh, you were a member of the Peasant Party of Hungary. Yeah. Well, incidentally, Mr. Naj, uh, you've spent uh, a bit of time in this country now as an exile from your own homeland, and you've had an opportunity to look at our political system and our democracy. I wonder what you think of our strengths and weaknesses. You do not have a uh, weakness, Mr. Lesser. But I feel that you cannot express the American democ the, the beautiness of the American democracy in abroad. Because you Americans, you think that is natural how you live in this country. In Japan and in India, I was able to speak on America that my audience were crying. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Naj. Thank you very much for your contribution tonight. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and Alexander Kendrick. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Ferenc Neutsch, former Prime Minister of Hungary. The guarantee certificate that goes with every Longines watch forms part of a booklet which also gives you much useful information about watches and about their care. Now, in the back of this booklet is a list of 100 countries where Longines watches are sold and where they're serviced. And that's just about every place in the free world. In every language, the word Longines means the same to you and the same to me. The fact is that throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch. It's a worldwide symbol of the excellence and the elegance of Longines watches, so judged by many impartial international juries of experts who have awarded to Longines 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy. Yet. Though a Longines watch is a luxury product in every sense of the word, it is a democratic luxury. For you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches. At Longines Whitnor Jewelers see Atmos, a perpetual motion clock created by Le Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity powered only by variations in the temperature of the atmosphere. Atmos, product of Le Coultre, division of Longines Wetnor. 